welcome to Marketing Without the Marketing. My name is Michael Bosey. I'm your host. I uh, really enjoy doing this podcast, trying to teach you everything I know about content marketing 10 minutes at a time. Uh, today's no different. And look, we're on a social media uh, thread, which I hope to keep going because um, I've gotten a lot of questions about this. have been asked, hey, listen, can you talk a little bit more about this? Because I've been talking about content strategy, content marketing in general. But, but look, social media is a really important part of any content strategy. So let's keep going with this. Uh, in the last episode, I talked about, uh, you know, how to select the channels, the right channels for you, what platforms are going to work for you. And I'm going to do a much, much deeper dive on this, uh, really platform by platform, which should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. But let's go to what is always my go-to, which is content. Uh, how do you choose the right content for your social media strategy? Because that's a huge consideration for how you build your strategy. You don't want to be stretched too thin because look, it can actually start to diminish your effectiveness. And if you don't have the right content and it's going to feel like you're straining to produce it or whatever, you're going to give up on it. Um, Back in episode 50, I was talking about doing podcasts. I got to 50 episodes, right? But the average is most people last seven, seven episodes. Why? Because this stuff's hard to produce. Right, it's hard to produce audio. Uh, you know, write the scripts, write the outlines, produce it, edit the audio, launch it. I mean, this stuff's hard. And if you know, to me, it's kind of natural because I'm, you know, pretty good at audio, being a musician. Uh, but to other people, it's not. And for other people, it's doing video, and that part comes easy to them, or writing, or whatever. So let's let's look at that, right? Let's look at the content that you're producing. To me, there are three considerations. First. Does it match your brand? In other words, what's the tone of your brand voice? Is it serious? Is it playful? Is it instructive? Is it inspirational? Um, I mean, there's all different sort of characters of your brand voice. So take a look at that with yours and just see, you know, come up with some adjectives to describe uh, the tone of the way that you speak in your brand voice, right? Whether that's you or whether that's your business. And then, you know, uh, and, and what's the best format for that? Is it written content, audio content, visual content? You get the idea. Uh, what are you most comfortable with? All right, second consideration. What can you commit to? Because listen, you can't have this take over your whole life. You just can't, right? You got a business to run. And yes, your content marketing, your social media strategy, all of that is really important. It's a huge factor, but it's not everything. So you've really got to consider the frequency of your posts. Elaborate pieces, for instance, are going to take time to produce. So can you commit to a weekly blog or like this this podcast? Can you commit to a weekly podcast? If you can't, that's okay. But be realistic about that and just figure out whether or not you can actually do that. Or, you know, if you need help with it, hire the help. Unless it absolutely has to be you, right? There's the thing about a podcast, for instance, right? Like it's got to be your voice. So you're not going to ever be able to offload that to someone. Maybe if it's writing, maybe you can get some help. I do that for some clients, for instance, right? Help either ghost write or edit or whatever behind the scenes. No one's the wiser on that. But for a podcast or a video where you're the feature, you're never going to get rid of that responsibility. So just think of what is it that you can actually commit to. And third consideration, and really the most important when it comes down to it, is what type of content will actually connect with your audience? It's again, I say this again and again, it's up to your audience. It's not up to you. Uh, But you got to find the sweet spot, right? Where it's like, hey, look, does it match your brand? What can you commit to? And then what type of content is really going to be the thing that connects with them? Okay, so there's a few different things. Let's go over these sort of point by point about what type of content, right? There's textual content, visual content, audio content. Uh, You could add some more to that as well. But for the most part, let's put those into sort of three buckets, right? Textual content This is critical in the social media environment. I mean, almost every single platform is going to require some written content, even if it's just title, subtitles, meta content, right? Um, And I did a whole episode on this. Let me put a link in the show notes. But um, look, even Instagram, which is predominantly photos, right? You're still uh, writing a post with it. You don't have to. Uh, 
but you're still putting in hashtags or you're still commenting on the photo. I mean, that's all textual content. And look, if you don't have a writer who can create really effective social content, then it's up to you, right? So you got to be you got to be really good at this or you got to get really good at this. Um, and so I would just say, listen, textual content, written content is going to be a part of anything that you do. Uh, so just, you know, get out there and practice until you get good at it. Um, I believe anybody can do it, but it's just like anything else. Practicing in front of a live audience, if you will, is going to make you better at it. All right, let's talk about visual content, right? There's a couple different classes. There's sort of images and then videos and GIFs, right? Instagram, for instance, with, with images has seen a ton of growth. And obviously, it's predominantly uh, an image-based platform. Others like Pinterest are still going strong. I mean, they got a, a over 100 million users. So, I mean, that's equivalent uh, to some of the other large platforms too. But, uh, but look, you don't have to to sort of uh, really get hung up on sort of the known demographics, right? Everybody thinks, oh, Pinterest is just for women. I mean, it's predominantly women. But you really want to find out for yourself where your customers are. So for instance, take some of the new uh, platforms like Ello, sort of an up and comer. Some people say it's already, uh, uh, it came and went. <laughs> but look, they got a clear focus on large artistic images and really beautiful stuff. And you could look at this where it's like, oh, look, you know, uh, I don't think my audience is on there. But what if you're sort of first mover into some of these spaces where you develop that? You might be able to, to, to break into there in a way that you just couldn't on an established platform because your competitors are already there. What about Snapchat? I've been fascinated by this lately. I mean, look, you may feel like it's not a big enough player yet. But oh my goodness, uh, it is growing at a clip that is absolutely amazing. So look, you may say, I'm not an early adopter. I'm not going to sort of jump in on that. Or maybe you feel like it's the perfect fit for your brand and you can get there before anyone else in your sector. How cool would that be? Again, I'm going to go into this each of these platforms in, t in depth over the coming episodes, but um, just a couple things to uh, to consider. Now, on the other side of visual content, think of video, right? YouTube is still the king of video, though they are being challenged in a big way by Facebook, yes, Snapchat, and even Twitter putting a lot more emphasis on videos. And especially when it comes to native videos, those that you upload directly rather than linking from YouTube. And look, Snapchat is, uh, I mean, they hold a lot of promise for marketers too. A guy like Gary Vaynerchuk is a huge proponent. Um, I can, let me, I got a great article from him that I can uh, link to that's worth uh, checking out about Snapchat, just because they've got super high engagement levels, uh, even though they're still fairly new, and their video stats are through the roof. I mean, they are surpassing YouTube in some ways, and of course there are, look, there, you know, the way that people measure video views uh, is kind of all over the map, so let's not take it too seriously just yet, but at the same time, I mean, it's it's almost undeniable that, uh, you know, they're making big inroads. And I'll have a lot more to say about that in a future episode. But And also, hey, look, it's really a lot of fun to see some brands experimenting with live video broadcasts, right? Uh, using the Facebook live video tool and then new brand new tools that... Uh, you know, that really are, what, a year old or less, things like Periscope, which is owned by, by Twitter, and Meerkat. Um, so that's sort of a fun way to do sort of live broadcasting, and that's been a lot of fun too. Um, so lots of new stuff uh, with the visual content. It's definitely going to be a major, major factor in any sort of marketing efforts going forward. You just got to decide, hey, am I comfortable with that? And then there's audio. Now, obviously, I favor audio doing a podcast. That's because I feel really comfortable with audio. As a musician, it's very easy for me to uh, record and then edit and produce good audio. It's just sort of natural. It's a natural state to me. So that's not the same for everyone, though. But that being said, we're seeing this huge resurgence right now of the podcast and with good reason, right? There's a couple huge benefits to this format. First, as I said back in episode 50, it's one of the most personal formats available to marketers. I mean, when you think about it, you're, you're literally the voice in your customer's head, right? I mean, through little earbuds, 
uh, when you're listening, when you're on the subway or you're commuting or you're, uh, you're out running or whatever, listening to a podcast, I mean, you're literally in someone's head. And that, that way it feels incredibly intimate and personal. And when you think about it, what a great way to make a real connection, which is the whole point of content marketing. You know, so that's just, it's great for that reason. But the other reason really is that it appeals to an audience that's busy, right? You can reach your customers on the go. They're not reading something. They're just listening to you when they're doing something else. So it's your chance to entertain them or inform them or inspire them or enlighten them while they're commuting or on the treadmill or whatever. I mean, that's great. So they're able to multitask and you're talking to them too. What a great format for that. So again, just think, Are any of those things really in line with either the thing that you're really good at or what your audience really desires? And picking the one that matches your brand is really important too. Make sure that it feels natural. Uh, As I've said before, if people people are going to notice if you're sort of straining against your own strategy. And remember, it's going to take time. It's going to take a consistent flow of valuable content in order to build up an audience. I say that all the time, right? But if you pick a format that's difficult for you to produce, you're almost guaranteed to give up too soon. So just don't do that. But when it comes down to it, again, listen to your audience. Wherever they are is where you need to be. Keep it simple. Don't fight it. Just give in to this. Dragging an audience over to a new platform is extra work that you don't need. And... Building an audience, for some, is the most challenging aspect of the business. Don't make it harder on yourself. And look, expect your strategy to change as you go. The more you learn about your audience, the more you're going to understand their needs. And it's going to require that you make changes to the social channels you pick. It's just going to. Uh, And the type of content you produce. I started out doing 200-something blog posts and then sort of switched uh, to a podcast. Uh, And in the past, I hadn't had really a lot of success with podcasts, but I found that it's a really great thing for me now. So I've sort of switched my strategy in a way. Uh, Not that I'm not blogging anymore. I'm still posting stuff, but it's just, you know, my predominant instrument now is this podcast. And you may find the same thing happens to you. So look, your customers are speaking. Treat this information that they give you. Treat it as a gift. It gives you and your business, if you think about it the right way, this huge competitive advantage if you're able to listen to them because you're connecting with them. Uh, Because you're only going to be able to learn about this firsthand. You're only going to learn about this by doing it. So I guess I'll leave it there with maybe one last question. Content works for you and why? Okay, I guess that's two questions. But I mean, you know, have you found that you've stuck with a uh, certain format, you feel like you're a writer and that's it and you'll always be a writer. Or you do videos and that's your thing and that's what you're going to do. Or have you found that, like me, you've sort of evolved into something else or, or, or have sort of uh, switched the, the mode uh, that you use? Um, you know, what have you learned along the way? How did you respond to it? I mean, if you don't mind, uh, please share your experiences uh, below in the comments section or, you know, hit me up on Twitter at mbozi. M-B-O-E-Z-I. I'd love to hear from you and learn from you uh, about your experience. Uh, All I have is my own experience and my client's experience uh, and what I can see out there on the web by other folks that I respect. Uh, I'd love to have you be a part of that conversation. All right. That's about enough for me uh, today. Um, But again, always appreciate you guys listening and uh, we'll see you next week.